Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm with eLearning Brothers. Today's session is going to be talking about how to get to the top of Bloom's taxonomy. It's going to be very, very interesting. We hope you guys enjoy it. The session will be recorded, and we will send a copy of it out to everyone who has registered for the session later today. If you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions uh, using the questions panel. If you can find that, you can uh, participate that way. We'll try to get to as many of your questions as co and comments as we can. Uh, if we aren't able to get to all of them, we'll try to reach out to you and connect with you offline. All right, so to talk to us today, we have Rich Vass, our Director of Custom su Customer Success with us today. Thanks again, Rich, for the time. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you. Great, thank you, Andrew. And hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today. This topic is one that certainly is near and dear to my heart. And those of you who are on the session today, it's probably near and dear to your heart. Probably because it feels like the... Uh, I'll call it the holy grail of our industry, right? We, we're all about behavior change. We're all about helping learners um, do and, well, I'll say understand, believe, and do something different than what they're doing uh, now, right? When they come into the learning experience, how can we get them to really walk away with new skills and knowledge that can be applied? Well, oftentimes, we don't really get that shot, right? So that's what this is about today. It's kind of how have we done that? and then showing you some ways that perhaps you can do it as well. Again, I am Rich Vass, so my background, um, I am an instructional designer from way back, began my career. I'm definitely one of those accidental IDs, like probably many of us are. Um, started with a major corporation back in the 90s, uh, major financial organization, um, just in operations, on the phones, entry level guy, loved the training department, loved my new hire trainer. Uh, just thought, boy, that was so exciting. I was 21, I think. Um, and then ended up you know, applying into the training department when the time was right, got that job back in 93 and have never looked back. So here I am, oh my goodness, how long ago is that? Andrew, is that 26 years? I guess it is. If I, I get would my, never presume to do that math. If I get my math right. <laughs> so anyway, it's been a long time I've been in the industry. Um, so over the years I've achieved the designation of CPLP, which is that Certified Professional Learning and Performance, that's their ATD National. Uh, I did that back in 08. I don't have any other fancy letters like many of you probably do, you know, master's uh, level or PhD level. Several of our uh, instructional designers here at eLearning Brothers are just amazing in terms of their education and experience. But my 25 years plus of experience has certainly led me through um, the trenches, I guess. Lots of um, experience in working with so many different clients at this point, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different clients uh, to create e-learning solutions. And certainly I was around back in the late 90s when uh, self-paced authoring tools began to hit the market and all of that. So I think, you know, I've told my story before here, but this this whole experience of getting to the top of blooms is something that I feel like we don't get a chance to do enough. Um, and there's lots of reasons for it, right? I mean, here it is. Many of us are already familiar with it. Oftentimes, I think we're just at the bottom, especially when it comes to e-learning. And that's what really this session's about today is showcasing for you some ways in which we on the e-learning brothers team the custom e-learning team here at e-learning brothers has just ways we've been able to get to those upper levels of bloom's taxonomy certainly welcome your questions if you have questions or comments as i'm sharing today please do type in the chat pod andrew will moderate those for us and i'll try to answer them best i can um, but i think you know what i mean when i say a lot of times e-learning is really about just that understand and remember, right? Those lower levels. I can do an e-learning course that will help folks recall facts and basic concepts. And these are action verbs, right? These are, these are our um, verbs that will define our learning objectives. We want the learner to define or duplicate or memorize or repeat or, you know, that's at that lowest level, right? We're gonna teach them something and then we want them to do those things. Or the next level up, we want you to understand so now, okay, you might have learned something that you can recall, but now we want you to really show that you understand it. Can you explain an idea or concept surrounding what we just taught you? Uh, recognize, select, translate. You know, those are some of the action verbs we might apply. And then we get into the upper levels. Apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. I don't know that we always have to get to that pinnacle. Maybe, and maybe I should qualify my earlier statement by saying, oh, it's the holy grail, right? We always want to get to the top of the mountain. Well, maybe not, right? We don't always have to. It's, it's very possible that the subject matter doesn't require it. But I will say it's the most fun. 
And it's the most challenging and it's the most interesting when we can really apply our skills as uh, learning experience designers or instructional designers to really push the envelope of how we learn and how our learners are learning and to do that in an e-learning way, right? So online or self-paced. So let me, this is all about examples today. So hopefully that's what I think everybody would love to see is just what, how are we doing it? Let's, let's look at some examples. So, so many of you may have seen examples of our e-learning brothers custom team um, interactivity levels. I'm gonna show you an example right now. Um, let me know, Andrew, I'm gonna drag a screen over here. Let me know if it doesn't show up. Well, I'm gonna bring it over here to my sharing screen. Is that showing up okay? Okay, great. So hopefully you can see what I'm gonna be showing you here. So examples of our interactivity levels. I'm gonna play one of these. Actually, let me go ahead and bring that up here. So let me pause this one. So these are very much, you know, level one. Uh, this is just sort of a reel of different clients we've done work for over the past few years. Um, you know, this is very much at that lower level of Bloom's taxonomy, right? Understand and remember, here's an example of under explaining the concept of time value of money. So we're just helping the learner understand something or just we want them to remember how this works, interest rates and whatnot. So we've got a few sliders here. The learner can, as you move things around to the different percentages, something happens. There's an example. Here's an example for a client about explaining the, you know, what's covered under this insurance policy, right? Here's a client that we're helping them understand, uh, you know, helping the learner understand this program that's being offered um, with a particular organization that handles, um, you know, home-based types of things. Um, here's a slider. You just, you know, you can't really see it because we've got this title, Exploratory Interactions at the bottom, but you move the slider to learn about each stage of this process, one through eight. So it's, I think we all are familiar with these. We probably do these all the time, right? These are examples of helping somebody learn something at that lower level of, Bloom's taxonomy, where a lot of click to explore, right? So there's a concept, lots of different ways to do it. This is something that we try to, we try to provide a lot of ways to do this in a way that makes it engaging at least and interesting. And there's no question, I think any one of us would say that you're learning here, right? If I'm starting a new job or I'm onboarding or I'm in some new orientation program, I'm gonna learn something by doing things like this Here's an understand level, right? So now we're, I'm, I'm actually, I just taught the learner something. Now I wanna make sure they understand it. So again, it's that remember and understand levels at the very bottom. You know, I'm, I'm teaching somebody a specific concept and now I'm having them make some choices about it. Or I might have them put it in the right order to show me they understand it. So call that a single response interaction. Here's a quick question, you know, how would you respond to this person uh, good job, give them feedback and so on. So and then we're gonna get into some screen animations and so on, I'm gonna exit out of here. But let me come back to my presentation here. But our goal here at that level, right? I'll just jump back, at that understand and remember level, there's a lot of power in that. That's a lot of what we do. I would say maybe it's our bread and butter um, where you've got to teach a particular concept. You need somebody to understand it. And if they're new, especially, you know, a self-paced program is, Awesome, a great way to get them onboarded before maybe they come into a blended type of an environment. There's a lot of value there. Well, I'm gonna take you through the upper levels of Blooms and talk a little bit about how our internal team has done some real exploring and crafting. I had a good friend of mine who may be on the webinar today. I posted this on LinkedIn and I was sharing it around that I was doing this today. And uh, she and I worked together years ago on a big project uh, for American Express as contractors back in the day. Uh, amazing woman, and she uh, responded to my LinkedIn post late last night and said, uh, Rich, it's all in the design, because I said, you know, hey, I'm doing this presentation on Blooms. How do you get to those upper levels of Blooms taxonomy? And her comment to me was, it's all in the design. And I couldn't agree more. So Susan, thanks for that shout out yesterday if you're on. Let me show you this first example here. So here's a course that we built for Adobe. Adobe has been a longtime client, and we have a great relationship with Adobe. Many of you who are using Captivate know that we've got our, our templates included, right? Some of our cutout pictures and our, uh, our stock imagery is included right inside the uh, Captivate interface. So they have come to us over the years to ask us to help showcase their new versions of Captivate. 
So this particular one was done for the release of Captivate 9 in 2015. Um, the challenge was to come up with a sales-based course concept and content that would allow a design that would showcase what Captivate had to offer. And I, those of you who are Captivate users may remember that it was back in 2015 with the release of Captivate 9 that we really got into some cool branching elements, some of those variables that were really awesome. So we wanted to showcase how you do that. So we built a course in Captivate and then provided that file um, on the, on, they provided that file on their website that people could download and just work through and use. Uh, Andrew Bass did a lot of work on this, who's actually on the marketing team now with our good friend, Andrew Townsend. So Andrew will remember this project from way back in the day. But a lot of us touched this project, it was awesome. Um, I'm gonna show you an example of how we went to that upper level of Blooms here, right? So in order to make it more engaging, and probably that's a good word to use for this discussion today or this presentation is, when you get it to those upper levels of Blooms, you're definitely creating deeper immersion and more engagement. Uh, when I went to Misty, I think a lot of you know Misty, she's our lead ID. She certainly has um, built our instructional design and creative really uh, shop here at eLearning Brothers Custom. She's been with us for six years, but I asked her about, as I was doing this webinar, I said, you got, what can we show? What's the best to show? And she said, well, we do have a lot. And you know, uh, she had just done a meeting with our sales team and, and had said to the sales team, we can't always get to those upper levels of blooms in self-paced learning. Oftentimes it has to be a blended approach. So we do that frequently, right? You, you might use a bit of a self-paced e-learning and then combine it with some, some blended element. And we'll show that when we get to that, um, that, that highest level of blooms when we get there a little bit later in the presentation. But in this case, we want to apply. We want the learner to apply, right? So. We want them to use information in new situations. Some of the examples of the learning objectives are execute or implement, solve, demonstrate, um, schedule, sketch. So we'll show you an example here. Again, I'm gonna just drag a window over. Let me, oh, here it is right here. So in this case, I've got just a video I'm gonna show you here of this particular solution. So here it is right here. Uh, this was kind of cool, guys. We actually came up with, we made up because it was just showcasing the tool, right? So we could come up with whatever we wanted to. So we made up a sales model. We called it elemental selling. And the cool thing was is we, in, we invented, um, you know, this, uh, this whole model. We invented this guy, Jake, who was the seller of this stuff. And it was like his model and process and so on. But because we didn't really have to teach anybody anything, we just had to make it look authentic. We really had some fun with this. So the whole idea was, we're selling virtual vacations, like, you know, VR type vacations. You could buy your own little pod and put it in your house and step into the pod like the holodeck on Star Trek. So that was kind of fun. Here's Jake, he's introducing himself. Hi, I'm the CEO and I'm here today to talk to you about elemental selling. Um, so we introduce, right? Oh, sorry, we're running this on YouTube, so we got some ads. Uh, we're introducing the, the four different types of elements, Terra, Glacium, Eris and Ignis. There are four different types of clients, right? There are four different types of people you're gonna sell to. And they could fall into one of these four different categories. So a, a Terra person is very grounded. They're down to earth, they're practical and realistic. Um, an Eris person, right, they're airy. They're more imaginative, visionary, they're dreamers, right? They like to imagine yourself in this cool little VR pod that you've got in your game room. and. You know, we're trying to sell these vacation pods, right? Um, glacium is icy, right? So they're cool, they're clinical and so on. Then fiery, fiery people are emotional and you know, they're, they're really you know, intense and so on. So we introduce these guys. And then the whole course, as you might imagine, is about learning who these people are. So the first piece is about understanding what this type of person is, who they are, what they appreciate and so on. Now we start to get to the application level. So now we're saying, okay, rather than just saying, okay, I just taught you the, uh, I just taught you the concepts of Eris and Terra and Glacium and Ignis. I just taught you about who they are. Okay, now I want you to apply that to a particular situation. And that you can show me, you can remember the facts of, you know, is this person Glacium or is this person Eris? Hey, this person is sort of fiery. Where is that? Oh, that's, uh, that's Ignis, right? That's like, they're, they're fiery, yeah, okay, good. But can you apply it now? So let's pretend you're gonna sell a car. 
you're, that's what this scenario is, right? You're selling a car. Okay, the scenario is going to pop up, and somebody's going to say this. Based on what they say to you, click and drag the correct definition to what you think, you know, the correct personality element or the, you know, this, the, the style or element of that person to the particular um, the solution here. So that's what this particular one was. And uh, another one, another example was, listen, you know, let's take, we're going to give you one minute here. And we want you to apply. We're really wanting to make sure that they can take the material and really make the application. There's some understand concepts along here as well. So drag the phrase to the personality type. If somebody says to you, well, practically speaking, what might that mean? Where could they fall? So we're doing some dragging of, you know, per, we want to make sure we're getting that right. So we do some of that as we're talking through. There's some animation that goes on here. I want to get to the last part of this to really indicate the application piece of this. So we have a sales funnel we teach. Let me just fast forward here for a minute. Okay, here we go. I'm going to jump right to here. All right, so we hit this. Okay, now we're at the trade show challenge. So now we're on the trade show floor. We've come to the virtual reality expo of the North American continent. I don't know. I don't, I don't think we called it anything, but you're at a trade show. Okay, you're a salesperson. You've just learned about all these different elemental styles. Okay, now you've got 15 minutes to make decisions about the different customers who are walking up to you. Can you identify what style they are based on those four elements we just taught you? Can you identify and then choose the correct response and identify what part of the four steps funnel they fall into? So, you know, and then anyway, we just kind of walk through. So this first guy walks up, you hear some audio, you have to make the best decision, choose it. Then Suzanne pops up, she's the sales director, she gives you feedback and so on. So. Um, that whole experience really as because we had some fun with that and because it, you know no project is unlimited budget obviously and I know we're talking to a lot of folks who are internal right to your organizations we happen to be an external shop that helps a lot of our clients who are doing internal work for um, their own departments right whether it be onboarding or new product knowledge or new leadership training or sales training but in this particular project we really could have some fun with it. So we really tried to go to that apply level. And that's really where we based all the activities was we're going to teach you real quickly what it's all about. Now you have to apply it. And then we, we that's how we did it in that particular case. So that's apply. So I'm going to jump now to the next level of blooms, which is analyze. Let me jump back a couple of slides so we can kind of see where we're headed here. So now we, we're getting up to this next level, which is we want to draw connections now draw connections among ideas. So not, not only can I learn about what it is, and I can understand it, and I can apply it to some scenarios, but now I'm gonna make some connections to it. Some of the action verbs that would, would define learning objectives in that sense are differentiate or organize, compare or contrast, really examine and experiment. So this next course example takes us to that analyze level. So this is a PayPal course. PayPal has done, we've done work with PayPal for many, many years. Uh, a lot of award-winning projects, some of you may have seen at various uh, award shows and, and different conventions or um, conferences we've been to. Uh, just an amazing partner. If some PayPal folks are on the line today, I'd just like to say howdy. So um, uh, the PayPal guys always are interested in pushing the envelope here. This particular project was about te teaching managers about understanding priorities within the organization. So here's some key key elements, right? Our business priorities are our North Star. Our priorities are a key factor in our success. Your choices affect our priorities. You're a factor in our success. So we're really trying to make the point to the managers in the organization that you have the opportunity to affect how we prioritize projects, which I just love. You're right. You're giving you're giving the management team, those frontline folks, and maybe a little more senior, some real ownership in how the organization is making its decisions on what are we going to work on, right? What new tech project are we going to take on? What new social media engagement should we jump into, right? So that's growing from the grassroots level, and it bubbles up to the top, and they become strategic initiatives. I mean, it's really just awesome stuff. So let me show you the course we built here. And as you might imagine, the, the internal stakeholder or the project partner who came to us uh, internally at PayPal, and PayPal is a massive organization, as you might imagine, uh, but when they came to us and asked us to build this out, they really wanted us to move into those upper levels of blooms. 
And again, the words we hear are, we really wanted it to be deeply immersive and highly engaging. How can we do that? So let me show you what we came up with. That ended up being a really cool approach. Okay, hold on. I've got it up here. Here we go. I'm going to drag this over. All right, hopefully everybody can see that. Andrew will let me know if you're not seeing it. Um, let me go back here. I'm going to go back a screen. Let me go, go back to the map menu. So I'm going to come down to this section right here. Oh, here it is. Aligning projects with priorities. Here we go. So many of you may have seen one of these before. So a Rube Goldberg test, right? Move the ball from the beginning to the end. And it's going to go through all of these different things, right? All these different mechanisms along the way. I remember my kids had to do Rube Goldberg machines back in science class, right? To show kinetic energy and how things move. Um, so that really was the idea. Let me go back again. I'm going to show it to you one more time. So clip forward, jump back again. So we have this idea of, okay, based on choices that a person makes, really, you know, it's about moving the ball forward through a whole bunch of different things. And if you, if you, if you, if you crafted it correctly, you'll get there. You'll get there to the end. So we introduced the concept of the Rube Goldberg machine. There is, an, and there is a voice here, but I'm not playing the voice for purposes of the webinar. But the voice, the narrator is saying, have you ever seen one of these Rube Goldberg machines? You know, the objective is to move it from beginning to end. Well, just like you as a manager of a team, your goal is to move the priorities of the company forward. And there, we've already talked them about these resources, right? Risk, time, money, and headcount. So we're going to recap them. So we say, all right, we you know click on each one to just remind yourself really what this is all about. There's only a limited amount of time. There's a limited amount of money. There's a limited amount of people that can work on a given priority or a project. There's risk involved. So you know we learn all about what those are. You're going to approve or disapprove, and you're going to execute the strategy. And when you execute the strategy. Oh, I forgot to click number two. The uh, the Rube Goldberg machine, the machine actually goes in motion. I'll show you an example of that. So we're like, okay, you ready? You're gonna do seven proposals here. Now again, keep in mind, right? We're at that analyze level. Not only do I want the learner to apply what they've learned, so we've done that, we've gotten them to apply it already by making sure they get it, they understand what we're doing. Now they're going to actually analyze a uh, particular proposal that comes to them and make a decision about it based on these four categories, right? Risk, time, money, and headcount, and then see how they do. So let's click start. So when I click start, this first guy comes to me. He's on my team. I know you can't hear the audio, but what he's saying is, hey, boss, or whatever, um, we've been noticing on the support team that the front page of our um, interface, like our app, our mobile app, is having some problems. There's some customer feedback we're getting, and we feel like we can really enhance that by making some suggestions. Well, how valuable is that to the team, probably back at headquarters, that's making that app? Because these are the guys on the front lines who are hearing the feedback from the customers. So as a manager, should I green light this and put a team together and dedicate headcount, which means money, which goes to time, which is, there's risk involved here? You know, it's based on risk reward, right? Should I do that based on what I know? So I either approve or disapprove the project. I'm gonna go ahead and approve it. And when I approve it, then, you know, it, I get the next situation. Notice how I, I just decremented my resources bank. It dropped by a couple. Here's another one. Should I approve or disapprove? Well, that one I'm gonna go ahead and disapprove. So I didn't lose any of my resources. This one is about, hey, we feel like we could do a better job of engaging with our Latin American customers, right? Latinos, uh, both south of the border and even in the US and beyond, we could do a better job of that. So we've got some ideas and I'd like to put together a team. We have a few of us right here on the team we think can really help. Okay, here's the risk for it. We already know kind of what the risk is based on where we're at. Keep in mind that I do need to look at the alignment with annual goals. There are strategic goals already for this year. So what should I do? I'm gonna go ahead and approve that one. So now I drop again, right? My bank drops more. And then there's a few more that I'll get presented with. I disapprove or approve based on what I'm hearing. There's only so much that I can actually do. So kind of moving along, seeing how I did. Once I get to the seventh proposal, I say, all right, let's do that. That's all, this, all my team has come up with these great ideas. Let's go ahead and execute the strategy. We move the ball. How's the ball doing? It's moving, it's moving. See, there it goes. I'm moving it along. It drops now to the next part, boom. I got it all the way to the end. Hey, I did all right. Fireworks. Woohoo! You allocated the strategy correctly. There's a big celebration. Nice job. 
you did a good job of thinking about how to balance the needs of the the company based on what what you know what your team was coming up with. Now, if you did it wrong, this animation, the ball gets stuck, right? So in this case, we did it right. So we made all the right choices and we're, we're celebrating and way to go. And we just do this little animation to indicate to the learner, nice work on how you did that. And then we allow them to kind of explore that. You know, we're, we're able to kind of look at the different projects we approved along the way. You know, the mobile app, how did you do that? This was, you know, this was necessary. Um, no, you know, number two project and so on. So I can go, I can spend a whole hour on this alone, but this was really, really fun, guys. When we got into this and um, the design team just did an amazing job coming up with a really cool idea to, you know, really provide some nice engagement and get to that, ne that next level of blooms, which is how can we get the learner to really analyze what's coming to them and make the right decisions? There's a number of different ways this can go, right? I could approve or disapprove those seven. There was a reason we chose seven because we needed enough to kind of go to that sample population to make it work. So, all right, again, like I said, I could take forever on this one, but let me go ahead and pop back to my deck here. Um, okay, so that was a good example of Analyze. And again, back to my friend yesterday who hit me up on LinkedIn, you know, when she said it's all in the design. When you think about that, good heavens, I mean, it really is thinking about the design of it. And you think about that, how much time and effort that would take. Well, you, we did want to have a cool little animation. That Rube Goldberg machine was pretty cool. We have amazing graphic artists. They did an incredible job, made it a, a nice animation. But the design of it, the instructional designers had to go in and think about how to prioritize, and what choices would have to be made, what kinds of scenarios would come up to the manager, and so on. Anyway, the feedback we got on that particular activity was just phenomenal. So, all right, that's Analyze. So now we're getting up to the higher levels of Blooms. Let me jump now to evaluate, right? So in this particular case, we are looking for a situation in which the learner is really going to have to sit and think and evaluate something, right? We might have to argue or defend. This is about justifying a stand or a decision. Select, support, value, critique, and weigh, and so on. So one of the examples we chose, we had a few here that we could pull from. This particular one comes from a financial course that we built for a client that is within the context of generational, um, just generation gaps, understanding who you're talking to. So it's really a cool course, right? So if you're a financial analyst and your job obviously is to share with your customers what the right financial strategy is for them. What should they be investing in? Should they be thinking about retirement right now? Should you be putting together a 529 college savings plan for your kids? You know. How are you balanced in your 401k, you know, or IRA or whatever? So obviously probably all of us have talked to a financial analyst or somebody like that, you know, in the past. So this particular learning experience was designed to help the learner understand, you know, that this was a financial analyst uh, learning audience. They were all financial analysts. There was uh, several thousand of them nationwide that we were training here. So the idea was to say to them, Having some understanding around generational gaps or understanding who you're talking to. Are they a Gen Xer? Are they a millennial? Are they a baby boomer? Having some understanding around that, especially within the context of family, the legacy they want to leave and the retirement they're thinking of for themselves, makes a huge difference in how well you will engage with that person. So it's kind of a cool topic, right? So we're thinking about you know, how to, how to make the learners really stop and really think about how well they're engaging. So let me pull this one up here. Let's see what screen I have this one on. Aha. Uh, I think it's right here. No, that's that one. No, not that one. Hold on, guys. I promised I had this pulled up in advance. There it is. I found it. Okay, here we go. So here's an example. Again, this is really about just showing you how we did it, right, in this particular case. We use the example of the time machine. So first of all, um, you were making the point, you know, why should I get to know the generations? Why is that important to me? Well, this slide says, well, let's you look beyond your own perspectives. Understand what were the events, the conditions, the values and behaviors that make each generation unique, right? You, you'll have an easier time connecting across generations if you understand. So let's do some time traveling. 
And let's take the learner and the, the whole idea or the concept of the time traveling was important. By the way, our team didn't come up with this. This actually, the client that came to us already had this idea. We just sort of helped build it out, which we really loved, by the way. So they had some amazing instructional experts on that team that just did an incredible job. So I'll jump forward to the instructions here and we'll say, okay, here's the activity. You're gonna examine conversations between people of different generations. These conversations are taking place at several different stages of life. Legacy, career, retirements, we've already learned about all of that. So once you read the exchange, click the statement, drag the revealed generation to the appropriate spot on the timeline, and then select the character from there. So let me make sure this is moving forward here. Hold on, guys. It looks like I'm a little stuck. Are you seeing the screen? Looks a little weird to you, Andrew? Yeah, it looks a little odd. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay. So I did go to instructions. Actually, let me just maximize it so it can, it's going to be in a little corner here, but that might help. Can we, can you see this okay on your end? I, I don't think we'll be able to read everything. That's okay. You won't need to read it. What if I pull it down to the middle like this? Yeah, we can see. Is that a little better? Okay, I'm going to click begin here. So again, like the goal, guys, is to, you know, first of all, it, again, remember, this is evaluate, right? I'm really doing some evaluating now. I want to, I don't want to just click and move on and just, you know, or click to reveal and whatever. I'm actually going to make some choices here so I can learn something. So first, read the statement, okay? Click the statement to send the client into the time machine. Drag the generation to the appropriate spot on the timeline. So the goal here is to understand where they fit. And is it pre-1946? I think that's baby boomer. Um, 1965 and, you know, beyond, that's uh, Gen X. That's where I fall. I'm a Gen X guy. Um, 1980 and beyond, there are different, different you know, types of um, generations that we're trying to apply to here. So there's some learning happening here. So my dad worked the same job his entire life. You know, this is in the career stage of this person's life. That hasn't been possible for me. I got laid off in my first year. It took me a while to find another job. Uh, there's rumors of downsizing, you know, <laughs> I'm getting my resume updated. So this guy's like, I'm taking some online classes as well. I'm not sure I'm where I need to be or whatever. So, I'm, okay, let's let's find out. So I when I click that, I'm going to take this guy over to the time machine. Here he goes. He's into the time machine now. We're doing some ciphering. The dates are kind of, we're thinking about where we were. Where does that guy fit? He's probably a Gen X type person. I think I'm going to drop him in the right spot. Drop him right here. It helps me understand who he is. Now I move on to the next scenario, right? So the guy I'm talking to here, where, where does he fit? So then he comes over. We learn about where this person was. It's uh, probably a millennial 1980s and beyond. Okay, good job. You did a good job of understanding what that person was all about. So we won't get into the detail here because there's a whole lot going on. But you can tell, you know, we're going to look at career. We, we're going to look at legacy. We're going to look at retirement. There's some reading, there's some audio happening here. But the cool part about, okay, once I've understood it, we're going to the time machine, can you figure out you know, where this person is based on the conversation, based on what they said to you, where do they fall? And where would you drop that person? So anyway, we, we get some feedback along the way as we move along. We thought it was a super clever way to get to that upper level of blooms and that you're having the learner do some serious evaluation of what it is you're hearing and seeing which is certainly beyond just read that statement and now multiple choice, A, B, C, D, which one of these is correct? You could argue there's still some multiple choice going on here, but it's done in a little bit more clever way. Again, back to the design, right? So, okay. I'm going to jump to the, to the last level now, which is this level of create. So, I think there's a lot of great arguments, and many of you professionals on this call today who have, or practitioners, many diverse um, backgrounds and experience in education, we probably could all make a pretty effective argument that it's really hard to do this well in a self-paced e-learning environment. However, we have done it. And I'm going to show you an example of it here, and it probably won't be a surprise to you. You might think, well, this isn't really like super cool or very interesting, but it is kind of effective. And really the goal here is, you know, we want to produce new or original work. Well, if you're coming to an e-learning course, what could you really produce that's new or original? Well, in this particular case, what you're producing is an action plan, right? You're looking at, this is for sales, right? It's for salespeople at Starbucks, by the way. So Starbucks was the client here. 
actually Starbucks wasn't our client, but our, our um, a, a really professional sales organization uh, that was their client, and we were helping to kind of do some building for them. So um, in this particular case, we want to take a minute to say, all right, what what do you think makes a great sales call? So we type some things in here, we click submit. Um, you know, is that going to get used later? You know, when I walk away from the learning, is that going to get emailed to me? And how is that particularly helpful to me? It may or may not be. But we do a lot of these types of interactions. I'm going to show you a particular um, interaction here where we were able to do that, where we were able to say, all right, learner, um, and we're teaching them about SMART goals, understanding the concept of what SMART goals really are all about, and then helping them to craft their own goals for their own uh, sales pipeline, and really customizing it based on the context of the model we were teaching them. So let me stop talking here and actually show it to you. So we are teaching them a specific model here. So let me bring it over. Here we go. So in this particular case, as we're moving along, right, we get to a particular screen. And we all know about SMART objectives, right? This is important. So we say, all right, use this as a guide. Write a SMART smell, uh, smelling objective, selling objective to your for meeting with your buyer. Okay, so I'm in the business of selling um, you know, coffee, right? I'm going to these retail establishments. Maybe I'm going into a Sam's Club or a Costco and I want them to carry this particular brand or whatnot. So my smart objective is, you know, I want this client to order, um, you know, 25 cases of house blend, you know, for their retail, for, for one retail pilot, right? Just, we want to just show how it's going to sell in one region. So it's, I'm the sales guy. I know, I know particularly, I've already talked to maybe this prospect, right? I know what he or she might want. So my goal is 120, or 25 cases of house blend for one retail pilot in, um, you know, the Western states market. So I'm fine if you go to California or wherever, that's my goal. All right, so is it specific? So so what, what about it is specific? Hmm, well, I do say it's 25 cases, okay? Is it measurable? Yes, you know, and so I can, I, I won't do all of this, but I'll just put in SAS test here. Is it achievable? Yes or no? What's realistic about it? And then time bound. Oh, by when? So make a decision by, uh, make a decision for, we could say, make a decision for fourth quarter. And the idea, guys, is in the learning session that the learner is actually doing a real goal here. Right? That's a real goal. I have a real pipeline and a real quota. So in the e-learning experience, I'm gonna type that in within the context of the learning. Remember, we're teaching a whole model here, a model for how to sell and how to sell effectively. Well, this is one small part of the model. So, okay, I've done all of that. So I've got my responses in there. Okay, go ahead and check it out. I can print that if I want to here. I can also print it later and take it away with me. All right, so now I'm gonna click next. So, all right, so all right, learning objectives, we, we're, we're learning as we're moving along here, right? So create a smart selling objective for PSM. PSM is the model we're teaching everybody about. And then number two, recall key elements. Again, I've sort of jumped us right into the middle of this training just to show you an example here. But as I'm moving forward, you know, and I'm learning about the model, and I'll just kind of, this was all built in uh, storyline here, so I'm kind of moving forward here. We're now moving into, okay, now that you've had a chance to think about your own smart goals, Let's listen to a conversation and see how well these two are doing. So I think these are helpful, right? These types of engagements allow learners to really kind of dig into how did it go, you know, look at what happened in this situation, give some feedback. Um, you know, this particular this particular skill is how to summarize. So I'm I'm getting to a particular point here. So we're doing a couple of listening stages. We're kind of listening. How did it go? You know, what What might we do to help give this person some guidance along the way? And then we get back to here where we're now saying, all right, now that you've learned about SMART goals, now we're learning about summarizing your situation. So this is the part where it gets kind of cool. So we're like, okay, you've just learned about summarizing their situation. You learned before about SMART goals. All right, now, remember, we're in the create, we're in that top portion of Blooms right now. We want the learner to create something new. Well, before they came to this learning session, did they have a written plan for specific actions they would take within the context of this new material? No, because they didn't know the new material. They might have had something else they were working off of, but we want them to now do something within the context of this new material. So first of all, look at your SMART objective. So that's what we came up with earlier. So remember, I typed that in just a minute ago. I want the learner, I want, the, I want my buyer, my prospect, to order 25 cases of house plan for one retail pilot 
you know, in the Western States market. That was my smart objective. Okay, well, what's their situation? Okay, well, let's see now. <coughs> Based on what I've learned about this prospect, um, well, their coffee sales uh, line is uh, been underperforming, has been underperforming uh, for, uh, well, we, we won't put a timeline on it. We'll just say it's been underperforming. Um, they are thinking about um, changing, um, thinking about removing um, all coffee from one of the from from, an, from one of the aisles, from one of the aisles, and just going with an end cap strategy. I know those of you who are in the retail business are laughing at me because I really don't have any idea what I'm talking about right now. But I'm just sort of you know, shooting from the cuff here. Obviously, the learners would know what they would you know they would have some context. Um, and just going with an end cap strategy, right? So if I'm in their store and I want some coffee, well, I'm not going to find a full aisle because it doesn't make sense for us to carry it. So what are the needs there, right? I need to type in their needs. Uh, you know, what? You know, I could come up with something cool, test, test, test. But the cool part here, and the reason I wanted to show this to you is this is what's happening during this entire training. And at the end, they will click print your action plan. And they will have just learned. And by the way, this is several hours of e-learning, right? So this model goes over many hours. You're going to learn this model. You're going to craft your own strategy throughout the whole experience. We're going to be using um, some web technologies to capture what you're saying. By the way, this wasn't just storyline. We also put in some, um, some. Um, I'm going to get it wrong, so I won't even say it. But well, um, Java. So we had to use some some JavaScript to be able to bring in and re bring back what the learner was was using along the way. Um, and James Kingsley, who many of you have met, is our learning architect. He put all that together for us. So at the end, right? At the end, the learner can pull this action plan out. And they can say, oh, that's everything that I remembered. And I'm going to walk away from this learning experience. I'm either going to email it to myself. So when I go back to my, you know, uh, my job, it's going to be right there in my, my iPhone, my, my, phone, my email, wherever. And I can act on that. I might print it out and put it on my wall, right? I want to do those things for that client to grow that particular relationship in the Western States market. So that's an example of how you might craft something that, that you're actually having the learner in a self-paced type of an environment actually do that on their own right they're actually crafting or creating something new that is beyond what the learning strategy was during the actual you know beginning of the session so that's just another example we had a few here that we could show you again as i mentioned before it's fun that's fun to really think about now all of us are in this field because we want to make a difference in the lives of our learners right we want to help them improve understand believe and do something different enhance their performance in some way that makes them a rock star, makes them better, um, makes them happier, and helps them perform better overall. So that's our goal. So that's everything I had for you. You know, I wanted to show you four examples. We actually showed you kind of five, right? These different levels of blooms. Um, you know, our goal was to really get into what, what, how could you move, you know, from one section, one section to the next. If you'd like to explore that more deeply, um, we'd like to offer just a free jam session. So if you're thinking about, wow, I'd like to get up to those upper levels and I'd like to do that, I'd like to do a better job of that. I'd like to get to that create level. How do you do that? Certainly send me an email, just richard at elearningbrothers.com. I can help you uh, maybe kind of craft that approach. Um, and I'll bring in one of our instructional designers to help walk you through that. And again, uh, no charge on that. We would just love to just get to know you and help you out if we can. So there's an option. So thank you for listening. And uh, this was really fun. I'll turn it back over to Andrew. We're going to leave it on you, Rich. We've got a bunch of questions here. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the, the same question that comes up almost every time we do a webinar, what tool or tools were these courses built in? Are these majoritively <laughs> Captivate, Storyline, Great Lectura? question. I will show you all of them. Let's see. So let's see. This one was Captivate. Captivate 9, actually, back in 2015, if you remember the elemental selling. This one, we do a lot of work for in Storyline for PayPal. That's a Storyline course. This one was Flash. So we did a conversion to Storyline, but the version I showed you was Flash, so it was an old timer. But some of the animation pieces, we had to be clever about how we were dealing with the time machine in, uh, in Flash. And then this one here was built in Storyline as well. So kind of all over. Yeah. Well, Captivate the Storyline. This one here, though, I will say to you, that we did have to use some web technologies to capture the input, right? So James had to build for us a database. When the learner typed in 
you know, their options for like um, my particular goal. We had to capture that and then return it to them later. So we had to use some JavaScript to do that. So that was a little bit outside of storyline. So yeah, I guess all over. Um, the PayPal example, how long did the instructional designer part in writing that work out? Boy, was there question. only one way to win on the example or could you win in several different ways? Yes, you could win in several different ways. <clears throat> so, I mean, that was cool. And I would say uh, we scheduled two months for a design phase, so 60 days. And that, remember, that's not just our team coming and sort of doing the creative imaginative engineering. It's my favorite word, by the way, imagineering. Am I stealing that from Disney? I guess I am. Imaginative engineering, right? It's in, the, it's in our, we've got some creative rooms here in the office where you're on the board, you're writing out, what could this look like? And then we're, we're documenting all of that and then we're sending it to the client, we're getting their approval on it. Um, but we took a couple of months to come up with the right design strategy. And it shows, right? Design is really where you make the difference and when you're considering a Bloom's, a higher level of Bloom's approach. So coming back to that higher level approach, so uh, as you're developing these, you have that higher level in mind. Um, yeah. But from the customer's, the client's perspective, how do they know if the high level of Bloom's was reached by the end users? Oh, great question. How do, well, okay, let me go back to my uh, model here. So here's the pyramid. So you would know if, you were, if your goal was to have the learner create something new, like that Starbucks example, right? The sales guy at Starbucks is going to walk away with a plan, and we're going to capture everything they're putting in. So I can see that. And that, by the way, that loads up to the LMS, and we're using some XAPI components there as well to, to grab that. Um, evaluate. You would know, and then the evaluate one was in the um, uh, the time machine example with the financial planners. If the learner is choosing correctly, you would know they're evaluating correctly. But again, you'd have to use some XAPI, right? Because you wanna know what they're doing in the clicks, right? So I wanna know contextually item level clicks, what the learner's doing inside of that screen. I'd use some XAPI protocols to grab that so I would know. And it's the same with analyze and apply. If you've built it in such a way, well, the analyze one was the uh, PayPal one with the Rube Goldberg machine. You would know how well they did based on the choices they made and did the ball ever move to the end of the Rube Goldberg? So I hope that answers the question. I think it did. Um, <laughs> one other question here. Um, so it seems like it, when it comes down to budgeting time and, and other things, it seems like click and reveal, which are lower level interactions, are easier and quicker to develop. But how do you develop a deeper content with limited time and budget? That is that is the question. And I'm always that thinking a paradoxical about paradoxical question. Yeah, I'm always thinking about that. And I think the reason I'm always thinking about it is because, you know, Elimi Brothers was really grown ten years ago when Sean and Andrew started the business. You know, their whole goal was to provide templates and digital assets for people who were doing this on their own. Make it easier for you. Um, the custom team joined up in 2012, so I was one of the co-founders of that team. But in my blood, when we got this thing going back in 2012, the custom team, which is where we created all this cool stuff, the custom team really took its uh, marching orders from, <clears throat> from that, that grass level, you know, grassroots approach to just helping you be more successful. So I know we have internally here multiple IDs who are just incredible, super creative. We have incredible developers and graphic artists. You saw some of the work they've done here. Learning technology experts. Um, I guess I will answer the question this way, you know, by saying that a little extra time in design. In other words, if you know that most of your stuff is down here at the understand and remember phase, and you just wanna, as you go up, keep in mind, you make it more immersive and more engaging. I don't think you always have to. I think you can accomplish your objectives just fine without it. But if you want to move up, a little more time in design is going to be needed. So as you're talking to your internal stakeholder, maybe they make a request and you have a limited budget. Oh, we need a new learning on, I mean, let's face it, guys, the stuff we're doing is important. It's critical stuff. There's a new product that's getting launched. Why did the company go to all the trouble to create a new product if they don't want it to sell like hotcakes and make a ton of money? Well, how, is the, how are the people selling it going to learn how to sell it? You. <coughs> You're the ones who are going to set the stage on how they're going to sell it. Okay. 
So if you just want them to sort of learn about the product and remember stuff about it and understand what it does, that's all, that's all well and good. But if you want to apply that to a selling situation, it's going to take more time in the design. You don't, you don't, I know this is a super long answer, but it's because I'm passionate about it and it's why we're in business, right? Is to help you be successful. Um, you, you, you don't have to have this incredible back end with this incredible Rube Goldberg machine that really works and it's animated with fireworks and all that. You don't have to have it. You can use the cutout people, right? Just a, just a static image to that with some audio explaining a situation. But if it's designed well, you could take that new product knowledge that the learner has gained from your course and have them apply it to a selling scenario by taking a little bit more time to think about how are we gonna have the learner apply what they just learned. Let's script out a scenario using still images and just graphics and audio. So I, I the expense is gonna be in the design. You're gonna have to take more time. If your stakeholders expect you to kick something out in two weeks, you're probably going to stay at that understand and remember phase all the time. If you can buy more time and you may have to say to your stakeholder, how much is this worth to the strategic level people at the top? What is the strategic goal? By the way, I, you should already know it. That's a whole separate uh, webinar. Uh, Todd Cummings, who's our general manager, is going to be doing a webinar next week on um, how you make a difference in your role. He's going to be talking about this. But it's really about understanding the strategic initiatives of the organization. If you know that new product is supposed to generate $10 million of revenue next year, well then, by golly, you need the time to create some application level scenarios that the learner can apply. And you may have to fight for that. And you may need to get your boss to fight for that. So I do get passionate about it, but I agree with you. You don't always have the time and I hate that feeling. I was there for many years when I started my career as an instructional designer. You sometimes have to push for it and say, look, give me two extra weeks. And then you wanna deliver. Right, so get that jam session, Let, let's jam it. I'd love to jam it with you and come up with some great ideas on how to do it. All along those same lines, somebody says it's about going into your tool of choice and practicing. You need to build and build, getting better and better. That's how you save time developing, is by practicing. Love it, love it, love it, that's exactly right. All right, great, so we're, we're about out of time here. Uh, that information to reach out to Rich is there on your screen. Um, I will be sending out an email to everybody later in the day that will include a recording of this session. So if you want to look over it for your own record, you can take a look at that. Um, also, I will include a little link that makes it really easy for you to, to reach out to Richard. Uh, so if you don't write down his email address or you want to reach out to him later, you can uh, via that email. Thank you, Rich. This has been really, really great. A lot of positive comments here. We hope everybody has learned how to get to those top levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. See you guys next time. Have a great day.